Uh, first of all, my name is Mike Creek, and I'm with the Voices from the Street. Um, and I brought several members of Voices with me today, all people who, who are struggling with poverty on a daily basis. And they'll be available for any members of the press who would like to speak to them afterwards. Um, the other day I was talking with a young man who had, uh, was a new face that I haven't seen. Um, I've seen a steady increase of these new faces over the last year. And uh, for me it's very heartbreaking. You see people who have exhausted all their savings. This young man had, had worked for over 10 years since he left high school, worked hard. And over the last year, he's uh, lost every possession that he owns. He's lost friends. He's lost family. He is frustrated. No matter what he did, he just fell deeper and deeper into the depths of poverty. 30 years old. And he has no hope. All he has left is a dog. He, he, he's completely given up on, on the rest of us. And this isn't an unusual case. I see it happen all the time, and other of us that work with uh, marginalized people see it. And each time I hear these stories, I'm reminded of what poverty really is. It's just not about money. It's about what it takes from people, those opportunities and those chances to live a life. And we often forget that when we get sort of tied up into percentages and, and, um, and what we think the government should, should be doing. What we need to do is to look at each other again as neighbors and find the strength within us and the courage to speak out against poverty. This recession is going to be devastating for thousands of people. Thousands of people are going to join us living in poverty. And our, re our resources for agencies and organizations have been stretched to the limit. They were at their limit before the recession. Health workers, doctors, people on the streets that are working with marginalized people, they have been stretched to the limit for years. But yet there's no increase in any funding. There's no increase in resources to help people. We need to organize, come together as people, and start putting pressure on, on our governments, municipally, provincially, and federally, to join forces, to get off their butts, and start really addressing the issues. It just doesn't start with the... Uh, uh, social services it has to be a comprehensive uh, approach to the problem and the federal government totally ignores the word they occasionally can say the word poverty I guarantee you they can't spell the word poverty it's um, it's a sad day every day that I have to go out and speak about poverty is a sad day for me I, I see far too much of it many of us in this room see far too much of it we're tired we're frustrated we can't understand why our fellow citizens aren't up in arms. They will be up in arms because of the, this recession is going to increase our numbers greatly. But we have an opportunity to, to stop that, to allow, uh, allow for the government to start addressing some of these inequalities that we're finding. So I would encourage everybody, I know a lot of people in this room are already converted, but we need all of us to stand together to really to start to fight to make a, a difference for, for not just people who are living in poverty, but for our next door neighbors, everyone. Thank you. I was born in the 50s, which was one of the turnarounds. Um, graduated high school in the 70s. At that time, jobs were tight, but I could afford a place to live. I could afford food. I was still young and fairly versatile, so I could swing waiting tables or starting out in the office field or, you know, at that stage, the world was my oyster. Things got tighter after that. Um, had my children, got married, had children. The early 80s, another bad recession started. Uh, we left Ontario, went to Alberta. 
at that time, we still had a house in Ontario. Work got very hard to find in Ontario, and the interest rates soared. We lost everything we put into that house. We were lucky to sell it for the mortgage. We thought, it's okay, we held on to our credit. We can start over. We moved back from Alberta to Ontario. Things were tight again. Very, very difficult. This was still in the early 80s. Then things picked up a little bit. Um, government did something and said, okay, we'll let the guys rest or we'll just pay them less and now the women have to work more. So, okay, I'm a new mother, out to work. My husband doesn't really have a lot of good child rearing skills. He's used to being the man of the house, coming home, bringing the bread in. There's nothing wrong with that. I was doing 50 how we were raised. So now you've got a whole bunch of guys that have lost their homes already and trying to restart, trying to take care of these children in grade school, not knowing what to do with themselves. And the government saw all this. And then from there it got worse. Now you've got divorces, you've got broken homes, you've got people trying to start over. Some succeeded. Now you've got people's pensions, civil servants' pensions being taken away. New teachers don't get pensions anymore. In the 80s, when things got really bad, they had told us, get your RSPs. So I did. And then you had to get rid of all that before when things were so bad, we had to go on assistance then. As you brought up, a lot of us have been stretched to the max for a very long time. Our homes are gone. Our savings are gone. Any hopes we have are gone. They saw this coming, and now all I see is an awful lot of police, an awful lot of crimes that don't get reported. I know ones I've been involved in don't get to make the news. And it's not unusual anymore. It's just, oh, you got mugged again? And I saw the lady over here a couple of days ago. Oh, well. We definitely have to get through to these people somehow. I fear for my son and daughter. They're still holding on to a job. Not for long, I don't think. I can't help them. I live in poverty. Hi, my name is Megan Curry. I'm a member of the Police Street, and I am a survivor of a shelter in my uh, My question is, uh, when I was in the shelter, I existed on $26.25 a week, from uh, what they call a personal needs allowance. There was no street allowance, nothing. And I'm wondering if, if this issue is something that is part of what could be addressed and hopefully, or what definitely would be addressed yeah. hopefully in the social assistance review. I think welfare, I was ineligible to apply for welfare because I was being housed and I was being fed for meals a day. But that's no way to live and it's, it's impossible. 